Good morning. I'm so glad to get to teach you again today, but I really miss seeing your faces, so I'm praying that we'll be able to be together in person again soon. Before we get started, let's open in prayer. God, thank you for this day and for this opportunity to learn more about you and what the Bible says that you would have us to do and what our needs are and how you have chosen to fulfill those needs. I pray that you would help us to listen with our hearts and to be open to hearing from you and to becoming more like you. In your name I pray, amen. Now I want you to think back a really long time ago to that time when you actually went to school at your school and not at home. What was that? March, maybe February? It's been a long time ago. But when you went to school that way, did you take your lunch with you or did you buy your lunch at school? A lot of people take their lunch to school with them. And when your mom packs your lunch, a lot of times she gives you several good healthy options, right? And maybe it starts out with a sandwich like a peanut butter and jelly, or maybe a bologna sandwich, or ham and cheese, turkey, something like that, whatever your favorite sandwich is, maybe. And then she'll throw in some sides, like maybe carrot sticks, or another vegetable that you like, or applesauce, or fruit cups, that kind of thing. And sometimes maybe an orange, an apple, or maybe a grape. Wait a minute, a grape? Nobody eats a grape, do they? When you eat grapes, you eat a lot, right? Because you eat a bunch of grapes. It's not just a one, type, one piece kind of fruit, right? Well, that's very true. People don't eat just one grape. They eat a bunch of grapes. And did you know that in nature, that's how grapes grow? They grow in a bunch on a branch and on a vine. And so that's we don't pick them the same way that we do an apple or an orange so we don't eat them the same way that we did what an apple or a pear or an orange but did you know that grapes are not the only thing that god intended to go together there's something else he intended to be together and that's people if you look back to the very beginning of the bible in the book of genesis you'll find out that god said it is not good for man to be alone. He was talking in this case about Adam. And so he created somebody to be a helper to him and to be a friend to him. Who was that person? That's right, it was Eve. God created Eve to be with Adam because it wasn't good for people to be alone. And God wants us to have friends in our life that we can do life with, that we can um, talk to when we're sad or when we just need to talk to somebody who we can tell when things are going wrong, who we can trust to pray for us, and things like that. And when we look at the early church, we see just how God intended these friendships to be. Now, the early church is the church that was right after Jesus left earth and went back into heaven. So we're going to read Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together, and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all, as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. The people in this story were not old friends that had grown up together. They were a new family of friends brought together by a common love for Jesus. They were the early church and they had a great desire to love each other the way that Christ loved them. Luke, who wrote Acts, tells us that these people cared for one another enough to share everything that they had. The people who had plenty gave out of their abundance so that others were cared for. As time went on, this family of believers began caring for each other, for other people in need as well. They brought people into their fellowship by reaching out and welcoming them into the bunch. That's God's hope for all of us. 
He wants us to bunch ourselves together. As different as we may be and as many different stories as we may have, he wants us to become one, united in Christ. As our memory verse tells us, Jesus is the vine and we, his children, he wants us to stick together just like a bunch of grapes. And I think that that is one of the things that makes this pandemic and the quarantines, the stay at home orders so difficult is because God created us to be together and to be with our friends, especially those of our friends who are also Christians, whether we go to church with them or not. And God created us to be together. And it's very hard when we can't do that like normal. So you know what? We have to get a little bit creative. If we can't be there in person, what can we do? We have to think of other ways that we can be with our friends or talk to our friends or interact with them. So what I want you to do this week, I want you to talk to your parents and see if between the two of you, you can come up with somebody that maybe you can reach out to this week. Maybe you have a friend from church that you miss that you want to write a letter to or and mail it to them. You know, everybody likes to get mail. I know I always get excited when I get a letter and my girls do too. And maybe you can talk to your parents about maybe texting or chatting on their phones with one of your friends from school or from your neighborhood that you haven't been able to see. Or maybe when you talk to your parents that you can come up with some other kind of creative idea that's a way that you can um, get in contact with these friends and be able to interact with them a little bit. There's another verse in the Bible. It's in Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, that the Bible tells us that we're to help each other carry our burdens. That means that when you have something that you're worried about that concerns you or that's a difficulty for you, God wants you to have friends to share that with. God wants you to share with your friends when they have these problems. And one of the things that we can do to help bear somebody else's problem is to pray for them. And that's something you don't have to be together with your friends in order to do. You can pray at your house by yourself because God is there with you and you can talk to God anytime. And there's one more thing I want to tell you that even though you can't be with your friends, there is a friend, a very special friend that can be your best friend that is always with you that you can talk to anytime. And that is God. He's always there and he wants a relationship and a friendship with us too. And the way that we have that is by having Jesus in our hearts and asking him to be our savior, admitting that we have done wrong, that we have sinned and that we need a savior and asking him to forgive us and to come into our hearts and to cleanse us and to make us his child. And then once we've done that, we can pray, we can read our Bible, and we can just sit in the quiet and listen and say, God, what do you want to teach me today? How do you want to make my friendship with you grow and become a better thing? How can I do this for you right now? And that's what I want to challenge you to do this week. I want you to reach out to a friend some way, talk to your parents about how to do that, and then I want you to spend some time reading your Bible and praying, talking to God, and seeing what He wants to teach you and how your relationship with Him can grow this week. So let's pray one more time as we end our lesson today. God, thank you that you're always with us. Thank you that you are the best friend we could ever have. And even if we're lonely because we can't see our other friends, you're there with us and you can comfort us and you can help us not to feel alone. I pray that you would help each of the boys and girls that have heard this lesson today to find a way to reach out to another friend, to encourage them, and to just tell them, hey, I miss you. And I just wanted to um, tell you that I love you, and I pray that you would just use them this week to touch somebody else. In your name I pray, amen. So let's take a minute and do a little bit of review. We have multiple choice today, so it's not even true and false. So the first question is this, God made people to what? Did he make people to live life all on our own? To live life together as friends? Or to never trust anyone but God? The answer is B, live life together as friends. The early church came together to what? Share what they had with those in need, play games, 
pray for each other only? The answer is A, share what they had with those in need. God wants us to be friends who pray for our friends, help the, them when they are in need, or both A and B. The answer is both A and B. Good friends do not what? Give without being asked, hold back when someone needs help, pray for their loved ones. And the answer is B. Good friends do not hold back when someone needs help. Number five, friends are like grapes because they can come in bunches, they make life sweeter, or both A and B. The answer again is C, both A and B. Good job. All right, we've still, we're still working on the same memory verse, John 15, 5, and it says this. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. John 15, 5. Let's say it together. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. John 15, 5. Now, if you haven't learned this verse yet, I want to encourage you to find a way to work on it this week as well. You can write it out and erase one word at a time. You can say it over and over again. You can make up your own motions to go with it. Whatever you want. Just find a time to work on it this week and see if you can memorize it. Our Facebook page also has some activities that you can have your parents print out for you so you can have them go there and do that. And um, we hope to be able to meet again in person soon.